Hi everybody, today I will explain that the sustainable urban development cannot be organized by a single actor. An actor is the word used for a person or group of persons, such as an organization. An actor is a person or organization who acts, who does something, who participates. Decision-making power and responsibility are fragmented. They are spread over many actors. Therefore, multiple actors, public, private and societal actors need to collaborate and or coordinate their actions to contribute to sustainability. Many people, they think that sustainability is the responsibility of government. Government should take care of it. They are right in the sense that government is a caretaker of public values. Values that are of importance to every person in society and that can contribute to the common good. But government and governmental organizations have only limited control of the actions of others that influence sustainability. Let me give you an example. In international multilateral agreements, governments promise to save energy, to reduce carbon emissions and switch to renewable energy resources. National governments transpose these agreements into national law. However, most of the buildings, they are not owned by governments, but by private enterprises, social housing companies, landlords and individual persons. Energy is provided by private suppliers. Homeowners, in turn, are free to contract any supplier they want. Government does have few means to make these different actors comply with their energy policies. Without the ability to enforce policy ambitions, it will not work to legally prescribe policy goals. A command and control approach, however tempting it may be, will therefore not be effective. The governance challenge of sustainability also results from the complexity of the urban environment, consisting of different types of actors owning and using the different parts of the urban environment, spaces and spatial skills, and many different infrastructures, such as roads, energy infrastructures, and also the less visible infrastructures, such as sewage systems and telecommunication cables. Cities are also referred to as socio-technical systems, consisting of different subsystems with intertwined technological and institutional elements. We can distinguish subsystems in different ways. Thematically, such as the water system, the energy system, the transport system, the food system, geographical subsystems, such as the building, the neighborhood, the city and the region, economic subsystems, such as value change and regional economic clusters, and institutional subsystems, identifying different administrative levels, such as local, regional and national government. Many more distinctions among sus subsystems can be made. Whatever distinction you use, it is important to realize that the distinctions, the subsystems identified, are always related to other subsystems. Be aware of these relationships when developing and implementing sustainable urban solutions. Avoid shifting problems to other subsystems. Identify and make use of opportunities for synergetic solutions. Synergetic solutions are solutions that solve two or more problems at the same time. Within these complex settings, there are three important groups of actors that I would like to introduce to you. Government, market and society, or public actors, private actors and societal actors. With their policies and actions, the actors within these groups all contribute to the governance of sustainability. They have to coordinate their actions to avoid shifting problems to other people, to other places and to next generations. And to identify and make use of synergies, solutions that solve more than one problem. Actors from these three groups have different policy instruments to contribute to sustainability. 
Traditional government instruments are legal instruments, such as laws and regulations, financial instruments, such as taxes, and information and communication instruments, such as campaigns. Some of these instruments are also more binding than others. Market instruments acknowledge the competitive character of the market. Examples are systems of labeling and certification, benchmarking and sustainability reporting. Typical instruments of societal action, the third category, are organized advocative action, such as non-governmental organizations, interest groups, campaigns and protests. But also neighborhood networks, joint procurement initiatives and cooperatives are examples of societal action. In recent years, there is an increased activity of social movements and bottom-up citizen initiatives. Societal action has become an important driver for sustainability. Governance thus refers to policies and actions of government, market and of society that together aim to influence societal developments. Governance involves a process of interaction, coordination and collaboration between diverse groups of actors. Back to the example. Sustainable energy in the built environment. The transition towards a system of renewable energy resources requires coordinated actions of multiple levels of government. The EU energy goals have been transposed into national policy targets. To meet these targets, national governments rely on regional policies, local policies, they stimulate the switch to renewables and stimulate building owners and homeowners to invest in energy measures. In turn, local authorities stimulate citizens with subsidies and information. Besides the efforts of these multiple government levels, also private actors play an important role by providing renewable energy and decentralized technologies, such as solar panels. Last but not least, Citizens play a role by reducing their energy demand and by adopting renewable energy technologies, such as solar panels. There is no silver bullet governance model to foster sustainable urban development. Our current institutions, organizations, rules, procedures and practices were designed to solve other problems and need to be changed to solve sustainability problems. Also, Every urban problem consists of a unique constellation of stakeholders, urban characteristics and geophysical conditions, giving rise to unique sets of constraints and opportunities within each city. What we can do is make use of general knowledge of governance and policy making, when are they effective and why, and apply this knowledge to these specific urban challenges. You now better understand why policy and governance are relevant for sustainable urban development, the relevance and importance of policy and governance for urban sustainability, and how and why to involve different groups of actors to jointly develop solutions. To conclude, I would like you to point out two trends and I invite you to think of the governance implications of these trends. The first trend is that the increased availability and affordability of decentralized technologies have empowered individual citizens. They can choose to become more autonomous, providing in their own energy and water and other needs, backed up by the centralized infrastructures and service provisions. The second trend is that more and more solutions tend to connect infrastructures and subsystems. For example, the introduction of the electric car connects the transport system to the energy system. Or, the production of biogas from sewage sludge connects the water system to the energy system. Now, what are the governance consequences of these developments in your own urban environment? Consider this from a government, a market and a society point of view. Please think about it.